We are back. It's still Politics HQ right here on New Central TV. My name is Kofi Bartel. So a second conversation. Once loyal partners, now political enemies. Yes, the governor of Edo State, Gordon Obasaki, and his deputy, Philip Shaibu, are on a collision course as the 2024 governorship election draws closer in that state. The election has uh, seen both political ambitions or the political ambitions of both men clash, and that may have also affected their personal and political relationships. Now, Shaibu had filed, if you remember from our previous programs, a lawsuit against the Edo State governor, but he has since withdrawn it and even moved his office away from the state secretary. Now, the coming days will shed more light on the political rumblings in Edo State as some major powers in the state come to battle. But today, what we're hearing is that the governor, uh, deputy governor, is moving uh, closer uh, to getting into that new office that he was asked to go to, which is uh, outside the official government premises where he has always been at. Our guest tonight, Douglas Ogbanko, is a lawyer and is joining us live from the center of attraction where all the action is going on, Edo State, Benin City, to be precise. Uh, Douglas, welcome very much. Thank you very much for your time. Um, good evening, Nigeria. It's a pleasure to be here. All right. Uh, I'm also told we have Abraham Onawe, human rights activist, also from Edo State. Abraham, good evening. Good evening, and it's a pleasure to have me this evening. All right, all right. Gentlemen, um, last week we had and we saw the statement from uh, Philip Shabu, Deputy Governor of Edo State, should I say embattled, where he withdrew the suit he filed against the governor, his principal, and several other persons. Um, he said that, you know, this was because of the intervention of um, his priest. His priest called him and said, um, my son, withdraw the case. And some well-meaning uh, leaders of thought and opinion in Edo State. Now, we then heard that uh, the state governor was moving his deputy to a new office. And today we hear that the deputy governor's staff have begun relocating to that new office. I want to start with you, um, Douglas. Um, what do you think is the significance of the deputy governor, comrade Philip Shabu, um, moving out of government house to this place where they've sent him to some road, some office down somewhere in Benin City? Um. First of all, I think that um, it's all part of the power play, you know, that is ongoing in Edo State right now. Um, as you know, that um, at the point where the deputy governor filed the suit before the Honorable Justice uh, um, A.R. Mohammed of the Federal High Court in Abuja, that uh, was a situation that there was no love lost between the governor and the deputy governor. Um, you, you know that the governor is a very powerful personality. According to our constitution, um, it is practically impossible for a deputy governor to fight a sitting governor. The, power, the governor holds the power of the sword and the pots. And that is exactly what you are seeing playing out with the governor, you know, relocating the deputy governor out of the province of Dennis and Debe Avenue, which is the government house, to, you know, somewhere outside, um, you know, number nine, number seven, because Dennis and Debe Avenue is like, there's a government house, a huge facility, but now the deputy governor is outside the province. It's not just physical relocation. That is also a symbolism that the deputy governor have lost out in the power play. Uh, Comrade Philip Shaibu, um, I think made a big mistake. And that, what is the mistake? You never, you are shine your master. That is the number one rule of the 48 laws of power. And so, now that the governor, uh, the, the case has been withdrawn, uh, of course, I don't really know how the deputy governor came up with the story that he was going to be impeached. Uh, because, to be very frank, um, there was no process ongoing. The deputy governor, went to court, and the court in his wisdom gave him um, a preservative injunction asking that the status quo be maintained. And at that point, that is where he lost every other thing that has to be confidence with the governor. So the governor is on the driver's seat. Okay. And being the governor, 
He controls all the elements of state apparatus. Uh, Abraham, hold the thought. Let's bring in, thank you very much. Let's bring in, I'm uh, sorry, Douglas, hold the thought. Let's bring in Abraham here. Abraham, uh, we, of course, we, we know what's been going on between the gentlemen, but in your opinion, what specifically may have prompted uh, the decision by His Excellency Governor Gordon Obaseki of Edo State to move the office of his deputy to number seven, Dennis Osadebe Avenue in the GRA part of um, Benin City, especially considering the political developments. We are aware we, of the issues between the two gentlemen. Um, but is it about not wanting to see Shaibu's face around? Is it about probably Obaseki not feeling safe around Shaibu or simply trying to punish Shaibu for daring to take him to court. To say that, uh, do not forget that uh, the governor has openly told the world the challenges, the, the, the disagreements they had had with respect to appointment of commissionership, to nomination, that the, the governor had alleged that the deputy governor was working behind the scene to install the speaker of the house of assembly contrary to where his interest lies that in, in, in itself were the background to what you are seeing now the governor had expressed it openly and had wondered why the deputy we want to have a different candidate from the one he has and the deputy on the other hand is alleging that since he declared his interest to become governor to, to succeed his current principal it has been issued. For me, I feel that uh, what the governor is doing is dictatorial. He just wants to cut the deputy governor to size. He wants to show to him that he's the chief executive, that he has the capacity to reduce him such that he would have lacked electoral value if and when he decides to continue or hold on to his aspiration. To, to my mind, whether you like it or not, this afternoon we saw that the deputy governor was parking out of government house. Mind you, the deputy governor does not reside in the government house. Only his office is re resident in the government house. The, the deputy governor resides in his private avenue, in his private residence owned by him around the GRO, the, the government reservation area. Just his office that has been relocated out of the government house. I need to put that very clearly. To my mind, I feel the essence of power by chief executive must be curtailed. I don't want to look at, like some persons who we, we, we ordinarily say that deputy governor deserve what he's getting, trying to go back. I am looking at it from the perspective of rightness and wrongness. I feel that it is too much an exercise of power. It's too much an exercise of power for the governor to unilaterally wake up one day and say the deputy governor should move out of the government house. They had joint tickets, they both re represent, and they are to drive the administration. I agree absolutely that the deputy governor, for all intents and purposes, is subject, is subservient to the governor. I feel in the exercise of power by chief executive, we must carry a little to in taking certain very strong decisions. I don't want to look at the, the perspective which is in the in, 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 in the meal, that, that, that the deputy governor deserves what he's getting. I feel that it's, a, it's about bearing, trying to move him out of the government house, amongst other deterrent decisions that the right. governor has Okay, so, Abraham, hold, Abraham, hold the thought. Hold the thought, Abraham. Um, you, you're saying that um, probably you're describing this as uh, being an excessive move uh, uh, by the governor. Um, probably considering the fact that the deputy governor is an office, not about Philip Shaibu, but about the office of the deputy governor of Edo State. Um, I'll go over to you, um, back to you, Douglas. Do you agree that this is um, uh, the governor going a bit too far and being excessive in using his executive powers to probably maybe victimize uh, Philip Shaibu, his deputy, who is a legitimate occupant of government house until he's removed? To, Douglas, yeah. Uh, you know, I with uh, um, insect infested fire, we should not be um, afraid of the raid by, by, by rodents. And you, you know, the, the, the thing is, the deputy governor understands the power game. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, he understood how he became deputy governor. And for him 
to want to admit this principal, uh, the principal will not just sit down and want him to come and admit him. He must also take pre preemptive and proactive measures. And um, there is nowhere in the constitution where they say the deputy governor's office should be inside the government house. Um, they just said there shall be an office of the deputy governor. And after, after that, they said that the deputy governor, uh, the governor shall assign to the deputy governor the duties that he may deem fit. So if you see the way the constitution is crafted, the office of the deputy governor is just a spare tire. Comrade Philip Shaibu is the most popular deputy governor in Nigeria. If I were to ask you who the deputy governor of even Lagos State is, you may not even remember. <laughs> He was very don't powerful. be too sure. Uh, don't be too sure, barrister. <laughs> no, I know. I said, I said you may not, not you. I'm not talking about you. Of course, you will remember. I'm talking about some Nigerians here, you know. So he was, he was in charge of, of um, the um, revenue. And he ran a lot of the parastators. And he was, as you could see, he was in charge of the better insurance. And to be very frank, better insurance for the first time in over two decades did very well, as it's doing very well in the Intercontinental Championship. But when you want to wrestle power, you have to calculate your risk. The last time the deputy governor was supporting better insurance was from the confines of a city room in the GRA area, which is not so far from government house. So it's actually the thing about power. You know, it's a lesson to all of us. Power is transient. And you cannot have it forever. Even the governor that is using the power in such a naked level, that the 11th of November 2023 will no longer be there. Okay. So uh, 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 thank you, uh, Douglas. I want to bring in Abraham now. Abraham, um, um, you've heard what Douglas said, you know, that you can't outshine your master. There's nowhere in the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in 1999 as amended that says the governor should be resident or should work from government house. It simply says there shall be an office for, for the governor. He can be sent anywhere. Um, they that uh, he talked about anti-infested wood and all that. Um, probably we can see that uh, um, uh, 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 Godwin Basaki hasn't done anything wrong. He's simply using the instruments of state to achieve his aims, and he's not at fault. Shabu has himself to blame. Quickly from you, Abraham. Just to say that uh, I do not, I do not, uh, I cannot agree less with what uh, Douglas Ogbankwa has said. I do not agree less with what Dr. Sokbankwa have said, but my point is simple, and is that I am looking beyond the office of the deputy governor being Philip Shaibu. I am not looking at Philip Shaibu here. I am looking at the respect to be accorded to the office of the deputy governor. And if I'm to look at Philip Shaibu as a person, I may have a contrary view. But I am saying that chief executives, governors of the state, should not be so encouraged such that they believe that they are omnipotent in the sky. And I feel that they should tarry in, in the exercise of their power. They should not be too excessive. I concede absolutely that there is no provision of the Constitution that says that the deputy governor, must, his office must be inside the government house. And I also say that the, there, there's also no provision that says that the governor must wake up one day and suddenly relocate the deputy governor, the, the, the reason for my position is not far-fetched. The governor has already expressed his disagreement and bitterness with the acts and inactions of the deputy governor. And as such, it is difficult for him to justify the reason for taking such position. Power is transient. Even the office of the permanent secretary is not permanent. Those who think they can cover the soil with their palm, they will certainly soon find the heat of bearable. That is the point I'm trying to make. That Philip Chaibu is the person in the eye of the storm as we speak. If you like it, if you like it for whatever reason that the government has preferred, it is not sufficient to just reduce the office of the deputy government in that magnitude because he has issues. There are other ways which the government have tactically done. Either you like it or not, he has made the deputy government powerless. He do not have he has disbanded his media crew. The office of the deputy governor is now isolated. People don't even go there for any activity. I feel that is sufficient. Maybe possibly All right. he also wants to ensure that he doesn't want to see him again. All right. And I think that these are the challenges. These are the challenges we have. Abraham. Uh, yes, Abraham, is, thank is, you. Is, yeah, Abraham, thank you. Um, um, one would have expected that following the withdrawal of that suit um, uh, by Philip Shaibu, um, 
that that the the relationship between both men will begin to uh, will be on the path of reconciliation. Uh, but it doesn't seem that that is the case. What are your thoughts on that? That despite Shabu stepping back from the courts and making a good faith gesture, that is, the gentlemen are still at the uh, daggers drawn. Just to tell you very strongly that if, 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 if the deputy governor had thought that his withdrawal of that suit from, 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 from the court, we, 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 we preclude the governor from taking on other action, then he was a joker. He knew how himself and the governor had acted to other persons in the past. That once the governor have drawn a battle line with you, it's a man that fights to finish. He wants to see you even while you are on your knee. He still wants to ensure he sniffs life out of you. The governor is not someone that takes a position and go back. He has that history. We can count. Just to tell you that he has already declared the deputy governor personal or grantor. And as such, as long as there are political interests for 2024 are at cross power purpose, he will do everything humanly possible, not only to grind the, 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 the deputy governor, but to ensure that the man will forfeit his aspiration and possibly come and join him to drive this process. That's the man we will have in us at the Dede Avenue as the governor of the state. If Chaibu feels because he has withdrew the case, that is the end of the story. He's just joking. He's the first step to, 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 towards the, the governor sending him into extinction. And I expect him to advise people, and he could know better. Oh. All right. Uh, Abraham, um, over to you. Um, what do you think, um, uh, what would you say about the fact that this withdrawal of the suit by the deputy governor didn't um, serve to repair the frosty relationship between both men, which people probably expected will be on the path of um, reconciliation. That's number one. Number two, um, does Gordon Obasaki have himself to blame for probably giving Philip Shabu too much power? Um, and, you know, for me to understand what we're dealing with here, you must understand the, um, um, the storyline of other states. This is a state in which at about 9 p.m. sometime in June 2019, 10 members of the House of Assembly were, were taken to the chambers and they were sworn in without the majority. And as I talk to you, that case is still in court. They've not even had one witness. They've not finished one witness in that matter. And so Philip Shaib would come and Philip Shaib would be the governor of the state. Should have known because he knows the in and out of Governor Godwin of Basaki. Governor Godwin of Basaki is a man that is a very organized person. I will tell you this for free. It's not somebody you take for granted. You take him for granted at your own peril. And so for him to have draw the, the daggers, uh, draw the daggers in the first place by going to court and to go and withdraw it again. There's no way that Robasaki will let him go. We'll forgive him. Just like uh, my friend Abraham of Yahweh has said, the way this matter is going, it's going to go, but the government's going to start going and going on things. He stops. When I miss stop, but he gets to the point where he knows that he has achieved his aim. And so I I don't know how the, de the deputy governor and his team really, how, the, how their tactics and their strategies are. But at this point, it seems to me like a lost battle. You know, you should know when the game is up. Mm. And there's nothing you can ever do that will convince the governor, that will make the governor happy. Okay, so, so very, very quickly, uh, uh, Douglas, very quickly, Douglas, just to the other question I asked, uh, did Obasaki give Shab Shabu a, a little too much power? Well, you know, that is uh, where you see my uh, Abraham of Yahweh's um, um, kind of uh, um, divergence from me will come to play because um, when uh, Philip Shaibu becomes mean, Philip Shaibu, is the most full deputy governor that those has ever had. We have had different deputy governors, uh, Michael Gadume, Udu Payo Siberian, Udubu, Loki Maswen. You know, just name it, looking at this democratic set from 1999. But from the Philip Shibu's the most powerful deputy governor. He's the only deputy governor in the history 
that has become an active governor, had the paraphernalia of office and every accolade and every kind of, and you know, um, um, thing that follows that office for that one month. And perhaps he may have been carried away by the powers that, that was given to him by the governor to now feel that he can, you know, outdo the governor. But like they usually say, power is nothing without control. But would you say so Obaseke may, maybe yeah. went a step too far by according Felicia such um, privileges, even giving him some things to be in charge of and to be acting governor, maybe he, sh on, on second thought now, shouldn't have gone that far. Should have acted like some of his mates in other parts of the country, in the governor's forum, who don't even allow their deputies to breathe. Yes. Um, you, you have said it all. The, the deputy governor went too far. Um, you know, uh, to be very frank, to become a governor is no child. I can tell you that for free. I've been part of the process of, of, of whether making or making a governor. So um, if you are the governor, you are the one that takes all the brunt. You are, you, everything is on you. And when you become the governor, whoever wants to, like, the deputy governor is like a shadow of the governor. That's just the truth. Okay. It is what... It is how far the governor wants him to go that he can go. All right. He cannot not come and say, oh, you well, want to well, 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 Douglas, you don't know. You don't, you're shying away from answering my question directly. I won't, I won't take too, too much of your time. <laughs> but um, over to Abraham. Abraham, what's the um, general sentiment amongst the people of Edo State regarding these recent political developments, including uh, the withdrawal of the suit by the Deputy Governor, Philip Shabu, and um, Governor Basaki sacking him from government house and telling him to go down to another part of uh, uh, the GRA in Benin City. What's the mood of the people in, in Edo State as we speak regarding these developments? Uh, across several lines. There is, there is a school of thought saying that the, the deputy governor gets what he deserved. That school of thought recounts very strongly his callous role in the inauguration, the midnight inauguration of the Edo State House of Assembly, the embarrassment of their benefactor, Adam Salih Oshomole, and how they had treated him, including getting a truck of the waste management block to block the entrance to his house, among others. That school of thought are saying that he's only being paid in his own coin. There's another school of thought that says that both of them have been in conspiratorial alliance against their benefactor. And as such, the ancestors are trying to teach them very bitter lesson that the deputy governor is getting his own pan of flesh. Okay. That the days of All right. reckoning um, for the governor itself are ahead. It, 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 yeah. seems, it seems from what you're saying, the gods of Benin City have woken up <laughs> to participate uh, in the political activities. I want to thank you, gentlemen, for your time. We don't have a time to go into the politics of Edo North, Edo Central, and Edo South, as far as all this is concerned. Maybe we'll have some other time to talk about this. So Douglas Ogbankwa, uh, a lawyer who joined us from Edo State, Benin City, and Abraham uh, Onawe, a human rights uh, activist as well from Edo State. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. May the best man win. It's only, it's only a pleasure to be on. with you guys. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. We'll be right back to give you something to chew on right here on Politics HQ.